so as a founder what has been one or some of the key challenges that you've had to sort of navigate because my background again was in finance so i was very comfortable working with um, uh, spreadsheets and, and also presenting some numbers but nothing really like uh, preparing a roadmap or, or doing customer interviews you know, or, or learning about uh, 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 platforms to code for example or do the program in the, the, the hardcore technical part Procrastination has become one of the biggest problems of modern day lifestyle, especially for content creators, freelancers and digital nomads who spend most of their time on the internet. In today's episode of Mobile App Daily Interview Series, we have with us Hugo A. Valdivia, founder of Silentis, an anti-procrastination app, to discuss how we can use technology to beat procrastination and boost our productivity. Mr. Hugo, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thanks for the invitation and I'm very happy to be here. The global productivity app market size was valued at 8.14 billion US dollars in 2020 and is expected to grow at a compound annual rate of 9.1% from 2021 to 2028. Looking at these statistics, I would say that the market for productivity apps is a fairly crowded one. And on top of that, you launched your app in the middle of the pandemic. So that must have been really intense. Could you walk me through the process as to how challenging that has been? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, it's a very good point because Silentus started during the pandemic and primarily as a personal need. So when we all moved to do home office in that moment, March, April 2020, I was acting uh, as a freelancer in the finance um, industry. And in that moment, I had a personal need to, on one hand, uh, prioritize my notifications, but also setting up clear boundaries between work time and personal time. And I didn't find anything like um, really solve my, my needs. So I did a bit of uh, customer research, market research. And it was one year later, 2021, when I decided to move full time to work on Silentus. Indeed, personal productivity market is um, fairly crowded, as you said. However, we, we are targeting a very specific niche uh, in terms of a user archetype. People like I used to be like high skill freelancers, the, the type of freelancer that you can find on platforms like uh, Fiverr or Upwork, for example, or also on LinkedIn. And so far we are, we are making progress with our traction there. And we are trying to also, of course, promote what makes us uh, different from other existing solutions. So what exactly is that competitive edge that you talk about? What does it entail? So we basically want to blend the technology aspect, but also the human aspect. So on one hand, we want to develop and we're working towards the development of a smart app that includes, for example, generative um, AI to act as a personal assistant for these people. So being a freelancer is a lonely profession. So we want to also give them the possibility to use technology as a kind of a personal assistant. So then they have a, a tool to brainstorm, or to keep their business running when they also want to enjoy some time off. Uh, and then the human aspect is the sense of community. We are currently targeting communities of freelancers in uh, mainly in the Netherlands where we are incorporated and we are targeting them to bring them uh, on board as part of our community, not only as users, but also as contributors uh, based on their experience, what they have achieved, what they, what they can suggest to other freelancers and that Technology and human aspect is what we want to use as a unique selling proposition for Silence. What's been your revenue strategy? How has that translated into numbers at the moment? And what do you think would the projections look like for the coming year? Yes, so at the moment we are, because we are in the market for four months, we are validating our solution. Right, so at the moment it's all about uh, making sure that we reach product market fit as soon as possible. We are targeting specific communities of high skilled freelancers, specific people, not only to bring them on board, but also to learn from their needs, their pain points, to make sure that we are collecting the right uh, feedback, for example. So 
Currently, we have um, more than 200 monthly active users um, really using our solution and the, and the core functionalities. So that actually makes us happy because we are prioritizing quality over quantity at the moment in order to get this relevant feedback. We have seen uh, a conversion rate of uh, between 5 to 10% of these uh, active users. And indeed, it needs to improve. However, at the moment, again, for us, it's very important, uh, of course, conversion, but also to have this engagement of the user. So we are, again, prioritizing the quality of our users over quantity. And because usually when, when uh, if we have validated the solution, then we can scale and we can go for, for volume of, of users, but that will come when we are sure that we have the right set of functionalities. What should be a marketing strategy for an app in a crowded sector like productivity? Yeah, I, I think, for example, uh, the type of uh, collaboration we've had with you has also helped us a lot to boost the, the number of users and our traction in the early days. Uh, that's one channel, for example, I would recommend being featured, but also being reviewed by uh, um, like somebody with, with authority in the, in the market, like Mobile App De Daily, I think. That's one, one channel that I would recommend because then that gives you the boost that you need. And also it helps you a lot, at least this is the case for us with uh, SEO, you know, to, to be uh, easily found by people who are looking for new solutions. And given that you provide with a score, then that gives credibility to, to the app that or the product you are putting in the market. And, and then the other one is try to also leverage on your existing uh, users base through uh, reviews, through the feedback that they can leave on your, on the different uh, app marketplaces, for example, um, because that will, that will bring also uh, not only the number, but also quality of users. You know, if, if you have a five star review, it gives you again credibility, it gives you um, uh, it will bring better users also. The social uh, proof. Exactly, exactly, the social proof, yeah. exactly. No, that's great. So uh, just a little follow up on that. Could you tell us this impact that you've had, for instance, because you brought up, uh, you know, how uh, you brought up the impact Mobile App Daily had on your app, in terms, especially in the early phases. Could you give us a picture of that in terms of numbers? Yeah, so for example, we have reached more than uh, 1500 downloads in these uh, first three months. Wow. And I have to say that at least 30% of them came from, from uh, people through the traffic that was generated through the, the feature article on uh, mobile update. So it was, it was good. So I also, I'm, I'm very happy also about sharing this experience because it was, it was um, also the way this collaboration work was, was very smooth. And I have to say, it was was very nice and and very professional also. Uh, but I, I would say one third of the of the downloads and pretty much also between one fourth and one third of our active users are still people who came from from the from mobile app daily source. Great. I mean, that's that that's actually a really promising projection to be honest, especially given that you just launched and in, in in a time like this now i'd also um like to tap into your expertise as a founder so as a founder what has been one or some of the key challenges that you've had to sort of navigate because my background again was in finance so i was very comfortable working with um, uh, spreadsheets and and also presenting some numbers but Nothing really like uh, preparing a roadmap or, or doing customer interviews you know, or, or learning about uh, 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 platforms to code, for example, or do the program in the, the, the hardcore technical part. So that, that learning curve for me was very steep. Um, setting a team, also setting up a team was also another challenge. Um, I, I, when I had to recruit my, my co-founder for the CTO role, uh, it was a nice experience because I had to talk to different people to learn, but I think learning on the, let, let's say, the, um, setting up a team and learning what it takes to, to launch a tech product are probably one of, uh, or the two biggest challenges that I, I have faced. So speaking of launching a tech product, 
were there any certain sources or you know resources or materials or certain places that you sort of went to to learn about uh, how to launch a tech product yeah so i, I well pretty much uh, open information on that you can find on the internet is is like the uh, no brainer but what was very helpful for me was when i joined a um, startup bootcamp from the founder institute it was like a 3 4 month program um because of pandemic it was online so it was very handy but that's in that bootcamp is when i got uh, most of my of the guidance uh, in terms of how to structure my thought process to to make sure that i was tackling or doing making the right steps in the right moment joining a bootcamp that provided a lot of guidance and also a lot of mentorship from seasoned founders um, but also leveraging on, on my network. Those are the, probably the two biggest sources of, of uh, knowledge and insights. Great. So do you have any uh, specific tips? I mean, although you kind of did cover that, but uh, if there was someone that was, you know, now entering into, um, uh, in, into tech as a founder or was creating a digital product, what, what would you recommend them to sort of start off with? Uh, talk to people. I would say talk to people. On one hand, talk to people. Talk as many people as possible. Use your network. If you if you believe that your network maybe is not uh, is not very broad or large, start developing a network. You know, just knock doors. Uh, one thing that I always tell people is that you will be surprised by how many people would be willing to help you, even if they are third degree contacts on LinkedIn. You know, if you ask politely and you are also very direct on your request, you would be surprised that people are very open to, to give five, 10 minutes of their time to, to share some, some advice. And then the other thing is just there to, to make mistakes. Just uh, go for it. If you really feel like entrepreneurship is an arena or a path that you want to, to follow, just go for it. Uh, you, you will make mistakes, but even also the most experienced people still make mistakes. So just, just go for it. Give it a try. Speaking of mistakes, now with the experience that you have, if you were to go back and say launch uh, Silentus again, would there be anything that you would now do differently? Yeah, as I said before, uh, now we have more uh, we have more clarity on, on our go-to-market strategy. But at the beginning, for example, that was not very clear. We were testing here and there, and perhaps. Sometimes when you have some budget for marketing, you think, okay, I can go for the obvious, you know, uh, pay that or Instagram ad, or let's create some some noise or through reels, let's try TikTok, etc. But if if your niche is not there, uh, it's it's pointless pretty much, right? So then uh, I would recommend just uh, uh, or uh, maybe I would say my one mistake that we made was to to not having that very clear since the very beginning. And uh, perhaps I would spend more time uh, thinking about the go-to-market strategy that best fits our our needs. So, what made you pick procrastination as one of the key problems that your product aims to solve? Yeah, exactly. We we have identified that um, people are or they are equipped with the solutions that they want to to start on with their focus mode. However, the biggest uh, challenge that our that we receive as a piece of feedback is, but what happens during the focus time? You know, what, what happens with my accountability? What mm -hmm. happens with my motivation, with my engagement? Or with uh, being time consistent? You know? And, and the, the, the most famous example of time inconsistency is uh, procrastination. So what about beating, fighting and beating procrastination? That's the biggest piece of feedback that we have received. You know? uh, so that's why we want to tackle and, and, and go for a solution, smart solution for that problem, you know, to, to provide our users with a tool that gives them clarity on what they need to achieve, by when. And it's, it's not only providing them with a to-do list or, or just a, a goal setting tool. Anybody can set goals and, and actually it's nice. You can say, okay, I want to walk 10,000 steps, but, but if, if there is no clarity or you don't know what you really need to achieve that goal, 
basically you end up procrastination procrastinating so we we want to focus on, on that and and that's where also we want to be different we, we are not talking about just uh, uh, one more to do list tool or one more uh, goal setting goal tracking tool we are very specific on let's fight and beat procrastination so what are some of the technologies that you've employed in order to achieve that goal so currently we are working it's, it's not published yet but we are working on this um, smart app or anti-procrastination tool that we we call it uh, using uh, some sort of machine learning we want to have some uh, some kind of tool that based on the user's past activity it help uh, or it forecasts your success rate when you enter your goal so then if you for example if you are a copywriter and you say oh, I, need, I need to write for my client I need to write a 50,000 blog article and then you set your deadline for tomorrow, but given your past activity, your success rate is 20% success. The app will recommend you to um, extend the deadline, split into smaller chunks. And also we want to, to do something like fun. It's a professional tool, but we want also to embed some kind of uh, gamification. On it. But we are, we are working on that. And I think it's, it's going to be published somewhere in January, um, so in, in maybe four weeks, oh, that we so want to make it live. Okay. At least as a, to, to start testing with some users. Great, so it, th that new feature is on the line then. Now, because I also kind of want to understand your target audience. So when you mention, when you say freelancers, who all does it cover? So essentially, who all are, are we talking about in terms of your target audience? So we target, high, in principle, we target high skill freelancers, you know, uh, people like copywriters, graphic designers, translators, interpreters, uh, sometimes also project managers or, or even accountants, for example, people who work for multiple clients with strict deadlines. That's, that's our user archetype. But we also understand that uh, these problems that we, are, uh, we want to solve are applicable also for em employees. So our idea also as part of our future plans is to first to validate our solution on the B2C market with these high skilled freelancers. But I, um, we also see the potential to scale our solution for organizations who are serious about their employees' uh, well-being, for example. Because the, uh, being procrastination or setting up boundaries between work time and personal time is is not any different uh, for for uh, in the B two B segment. Yeah, very recently, I think two weeks back, you uh, were at uh, you presented your app pitch in in front of a jury. Uh, I think it was two two weeks ago. So I just wanted to know that. Uh, is there, are there certain tips you would have for, you know, uh, founders on how to present a pitch, a product pitch in front of uh, investors? One tip, for example, that I can share is be clear on what problem you want to solve and, and how your product works. You know, uh, that's, that's one thing that I have learned, especially on the second part, because the problem, it's, it's usually easier to, to explain and understand. You know, I, I want to fight with climate change. I want to save uh, X number of hours, etc. You know, that's it's very clear. But how you are going to do, how your pr uh, product works, that's usually a bit more challenging, not because you are creating something fancy or difficult to explain, but sometimes we get so much in love with the product that we know how it works. But that doesn't mean that people also understand how it works. So that's that's the challenge to explain very clearly what problem you are solving and how your product works to solve that problem. That's that's uh, one one tip I, I have. Just if you nail those two areas, then the rest, how you are gonna make money, it, it will flow. But those two parts for me are critical, and that's also feedback that I I received from from the jury that day. But it was a nice experience overall. Great. I think uh, clarity of the product is much more important than the bigger mumbo jumbo. And uh, I would like to conclude on that note. And thank you so Correct. much again for taking out the time for uh, this interview. And I really wish really a lots of luck 
for your app in the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for the kind words. And uh, yeah, I, I look forward also to, to 2023 and the progress we can make. All right. Have a great day. Thanks.